لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العليم العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف العنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين مولانا عبد القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد This is the third part of a series of short addresses with regards to the dua of Mahim Barak Rajab. It's an amazing dua in an amazing month. And it is up to us how we apply this dua as we recite it. We need to ponder upon these duas and find the kernel of these duas the core of this duas and see how best we can use it to better ourselves not the physical entities that we are but the soul within which is going to reach into alam barzak and beyond and that's where the soul's real journey begins in this world these bodies are pregnant with these souls and in this state the soul is not what is apparent Therefore, we concentrate a lot on the physical body that is actually carrying the soul, not realizing that that soul is which needs to be perfected by our own thoughts, our own deeds and actions. And it is that soul that needs to come out perfect for the next stage or the main stage of our lives, the eternal stage of our lives. In the previous session, we tried to discuss on the first verse of the dua for the month of Rajab Ya man Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya man arjuhu li kulli khair O my Lord from you I expect nothing but all good Here just an addition that word arjuhu the mufassirin and those who are experts in language they say it means perpetual at all the time continuous ya man arjuhu i am continuously expecting good it's not a state that i'm doing it just when i do this dua and here a very important point that we must remember it is not only the human being that is continuously calling out on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or doing munajat with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the pebbles on this earth to the clouds in the skies to the animals and the birds and the trees every single atom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is continuously in his hum and gum is continuously doing arj is continuously expecting its existence from the absolute existence just as our body, although we may not be uttering the words of dua, we may not be conscious that we are in dua, every atom that makes up our material or spiritual being is also constantly in dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No wonder we are told, do not take this body of yours to those places that are of evil, those places where all the shar is found, all the najasa is found. Because in those places, it is your body that is doing dua against you. You may not even realize it. In that action that you're doing that is haram, you may not realize that your limbs and every atom that makes you is doing bad dua for you, is, doing, is cursing you for having put it in that position. Because it, every atom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, has been for perfection and for goodness. So we are told to be very mindful about this. So we are telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously, I expect nothing but good from you. In the next verse we say, وَآمَنُوا سَخَتَهُ inda كُلِّ شَرْ Ajeeb. Truly, if one was just to pick on this verse, and continuously ask themselves, what does this mean? Wa'amanu, Ya Allah, I 
am certain. This is a sigla of certainty. I am confidently telling you, O oh my Lord, I, ex I accept that you are the sovereign Lord. I accept that you are the Almighty, you are the most powerful, you are the one who's created. You are the one in Kun Fayakun, you could destroy me and finish me. You've done that through Fir'aun and Ali Fir'aun and many others. But Ya Allah, look at me. So arrogant, I should be humble in front of you. But here I stand before you. Or I sit in dua and I'm telling you, I am certain that I am safe. I'm in aman. I'm in safety. From the squeezing, sakhat is from that agony and the pain and the seriousness of your shar. No matter how violent I become, no matter how disobedient I become, no matter what heights of lawlessness, of debauchery, of bad things that you could think of, no matter how low I stoop, Ya Allah, I may become a, God forbid, a murderer, a drunkard, a womanizer, I could do all the bad things that one can think of, the worst of things. I could torture young children, as happened in Syria and what have you. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala am telling you confidently that I know that I'm in aman from the severeness of your shar. Brothers and sisters, when we recite this dua and we say these words, we should feel a sense of shame that this Lord is so merciful, being so powerful, He's so full of love and affection for me that He is showing His mercy upon me by giving me time to turn back to Him. When I utter these words, that is what should come to my mind. Whilst I'm protected in this protected time, I need to use that protection for the betterment of myself not let it go. And this is what happens to us. We make the small, small mistakes, the small lies here and there. The small mistakes that we do, the small ghibah that we do, the small, small things that we overlook, the taking of namaz lightly, the taking of fasting lightly, the small, small things, not the big things. And they build up. And in this aman, as they build up, the problem is not now. Shaitan is looking at you and he's laughing. Shaitan comes to us and attacks us at the last moments of our lives, especially the believers. For the believers, the threat is in the last moments of their lives. We think, yes, I've done my azadari, yes, I've recited my wajibat. So what if I've done A, B, C, small, small things? To me, they're insignificant. But at the time of my death, those insignificant things are used by shaitan to turn me away from my Lord and I die in the state of disbelief. This is the fear. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for me to awaken now. And I'm taking undue advantage of that mercy to keep on violating his laws and his rights. At the same time, I am safe from the shar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is being merciful to me and has promised the Holy Prophet that after, now that you have come, now that I finalized the religion on earth, I will not destroy nations as I did before, like the Komenu and Komelut. No more nations will be destroyed like Kome Saleh. But instead, I've got to be careful. I am safe from the shar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about the share of my own actions? Am I safe from those? As I conclude, I'll just give one example. We always talk about paradise being at the feet of the mother. We take that as a literal sense and we say, we tell our children, be obedient and take care of your mother and you'll get paradise. What of that child who is obedient to the mother, very obedient to the mother, 
stands when the mother says stand, sits when the mother says sit, does not do anything but what the mother says. But that mother has taught the child to steal, to lie, to murder. Does that child still go to Jannah because it was obedient to the mother? The shar here does not have to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shar of the actions of the mother, the shar of the actions of the child who now has become bulug, has now got uh, is now cognizant and realizes what I'm doing is wrong. He's about to stab somebody and knows that what I'm doing is wrong. In the obedience of the mother, he's doing this knowing he's disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Its shar and effect is going to be here. It's not going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but his own doings, the mother's own teachings, will turn into shar coming from themselves unto themselves. So whilst we're telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَآمَنُوا السَّقَطَوْا in the كُلِّ شَرْ I'm, I'm at peace that I know I'm safe from your shar. Here there's no guarantee that I'm safe from the calamities that befall upon myself due to my own actions, which are not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I live in a world of cause and effect. That shar I cannot blame on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I slap somebody and he slaps me back and I say, Allah slapped me. No. So yes, I am safe from Allah's shar in this dunya. My counting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to happen in alam barzak and in the akhirah. But I am not safe from the shar that is brought upon myself by my own actions. So now when such problems happen, I should remember the dua of Rajab in the rest of my life. And say, Allah is not the one who's caused me to go to jail. Allah is not the one who's caused me embarrassment in public. It is me and my own actions that have caused this problem to befall upon myself. This will help me differentiate between what is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is the calamity that I've brought upon my own self. So we tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whilst you in your mercy have kept us safe, Give us the power and the strength to become better and never have to worry about being protected from your shar because we do not do anything that would bring down upon us your wrath.